Hi everyone, this is Dan from Byte to Bot. When I got my CNC machine, I really wasn't comfortable using it right away. Uh, even though I was shown a couple times how to use it, it, I wasn't comfortable with it. So in this video, I wanted to show the startup and basic usage of a CNC mill so that if you just bought a machine yourself, uh, you can you see how it's used, um, and get some tips and pointers to get you uh, from more familiar with your own machine and uh, be able to use it a little bit more effectively. All right, the first thing we want to do is make sure that the machine is in the off position. This is my rotary three-phase converter. It's got a wall unit that has the capacitors inside. So the first thing I'm going to do is start this up. Now that the three-phase converter is running, I'm going to turn the main power on to the mill. Now that the main power is on, I'm going to turn the power on to the computer and let that boot up. Usually I wait for the all the fans to get up and running, uh, make sure that they're all at the same RPM that they're going to be running at. Then I turn everything on. Once I'm happy, I go ahead and release the, the emergency cutoff switch. And you'll hear the relays pick and you'll see your machine start up. So the first thing we want to do every time we start up the machine is go through the homing process. So first I do the, the upper Z limit. I'm gonna put my machine into zero return mode and press the plus Z button. Once it hits the limit switches, it will know its upper Z position. I'll go ahead and do the X and the Y axis at this as well. Now you probably could do all three at the same time if you were in a hurry, but I like to watch each one go through the homing process just to make sure that nothing strange happens. All right, now that it's done homing, I wanna basically move the machine off of the homing limits. So I'm gonna do that with the jog command. So I'm gonna put the machine in jog mode and holding the rapid button, which is in the center, I'm gonna move the Z down, the X, and the Y. All right, let's go through these functions one by one and discuss briefly what they do. I actually don't know too much about some of them, but the first one is the edit function. So when I want to edit um, a NC program or send a file from the computer to the machine or pull the file out of the machine and back into the computer, I use edit mode and this allows you to uh, modify the G code as well up in the, the screen. Auto mode is what you're gonna use to uh, basically cut your part out. It, uh, um, there's not too much to say about that. Once you hit the cycle start button, it'll, it'll run through the program and cut out your part. Tape mode is really a, um, a way for us to send the G code from the computer at one line at a time. Uh, some people call this drip feeding, but uh, it's really a good way to have your uh, G code stored in your computer and sent line by line into the machine. Now I do this because Fusion 360 generates so much G code that it doesn't actually fit in the memory in my machine. So I have to send it line by line every time. So. Uh, there's there's different reasons for doing that, but that's why I do it MDI mode is a mode where you can actually uh, uh, Tell it to do certain things using G-code in on the screen 
Uh, I don't actually use it too much because I've got some other software that helps out with that, but uh, it is pretty handy. Handle mode will allow you to use the, the handheld unit to, to really adjust the fine tuning of the machine. Uh, this is real helpful for setting zero position. Teach and handle and teach and jog are two modes that I really don't have too much experience with. So uh, if there's anything useful, if I learn about it, I'll let you know. Jog mode will allow you to move the machine uh, anywhere you want to really and um, manually as if you were more or less cranking the dials on a manual uh, machine. So it's, uh, it's pretty handy for, for getting uh, the tool close to where your zero position is going to be and then you can fine tune that actual position with the handle. Zero return is going to allow you to do the homing of the machine. Uh, every time you start up, you're going to have to home it. Plan on doing that every time you start up. So those are the main functions of the machine. Uh, let's go into a little bit more depth on uh, programs. All right, for the first program operation we're going to do is delete a file out of the memory. Now, assuming you've just started your machine up, you're done with the the initial homing procedure. What I would do is go to edit mode and then go to the program uh, feature in the software. Uh, on my machine it's got a library uh, button here. Uh, so it actually shows all of the G codes that are listed in the memory. And I want to delete this uh, 01012 file. So what I want to do at this point is just type O1012 and press the delete button. So now it's out of memory. If I out of <laughs> So now it's deleted from the memory. If I go back to the library, I can see that it's no longer in there. Now, in order to put a program into memory, we're going to need to use the computer. So we've got our machine in edit mode. Uh, I'm going to simply press the input button over here and you'll notice a LSK is blinking down here. That means the machine is uh, ready to accept a file. So using your computer, in, in my case I'm using a Raspberry Pi with uh, the CNC feeder application that I've written. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a file and I am going to send it. When I start sending this changes to input and up here we could see the, the number of bytes being transferred uh, is continuously being updated. So when this finishes, which it just did, uh, it shows the program that we just uh, sent to it and if I go back to the, the library we can see now that 01012 is back in memory so I just transferred from the computer into the machine again and it's ready to run in order to run it I would basically put the machine in auto mode and hit cycle start let's say you've got your uh, material already clamped down into the machine like I've got over here and you're ready to start uh, putting in the zero position of where the tool needs to start out. When you design your, your model and generate your, your G-code in a post operation uh, you're gonna tell it where the zero 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 point is and so now we're going to go uh, move the machine to that 000 point and tell it that that is your, your home position for the part. So to do that, I'm going to move the machine in jog mode to get it close. Then I'm going to use the handle to get it fine-tuned. So now that I've jogged it close to where my zero position is, I'm going to put it in handle mode and get it even closer. A 
Okay, now that I've got the, the tip of the tool at the zero position, I need to tell the machine that this is the zero position. In order to do that, I'm going to go to my position and I'm going to view all. So in this screen, it shows what the relative, absolute, and machine positions are. The machine is the one we're interested in, so that's what I'm going to write down on a piece of paper. All right, now that I've written down my machine zero position, I'm going to go to the offset menu and we're going to do a work offset. Uh, this has uh, four different work offsets that if we were cutting four parts at the same time, you know, we can uh, put each one of those in there. But in this case, I'm just, I'm just going to do one part. And so I'm going to fill out the number zero. And to do that, I'm just going to type X and then my coordinate. 346.285 and put, press the input button. So that changed the, the work offset for the X position. Now I'm going to do the Y and the Z. So Y, we go 373.603. Input. Z, you get a 4, 2, 5, point eight, five zero. Oh. input. All right, now we have all of our work offsets en entered, and that is the zero position for the part. All right, the next thing we're going to do is put the machine into auto mode. I'm going to go ahead and put the machine back into the position screen that shows where the machine is at. Um, I'm going to go to program and we're going to load the program that I want to run. So I'm going to go actually back to edit mode go to the library and I'm going to pull up 01012 and press the down cursor, which is going to actually pull up that, that G-code um, program. And now we're going to go back to auto mode. And this is kind of the moment of truth. We've got the program loaded. We've got our work offsets uh, entered. And it's time to hit the cycle start button. Now, every time I do a cycle start, I make sure that my hand is on the reset button just in case anything goes wrong I can hit that button and stop the machine. So let's go ahead and run the program. On this program it first um, zeroes out the Z position by doing a home command and then it will start. And there we have it. Our part is all cut out, just like we wanted. All right, let's say we're all done with machining for the day and we wanna shut down our machine. So what I do is I always put the machine into jog mode and get the, the tool more or less in the center of the travel so that when I start it up, I can do a, a proper home sequence and there won't be any issues. So I'll just move the spindle down 
X and Y to the center positions. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and press the, the e-stop button and then shut off the, the computer. And then we shut off the main power switch on the side of the machine. And finally, we're gonna stop the rotary phase converter. That's it.